Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and today we're here to cover a number of things. We're here to talk about an Adidas kit deal which has reportedly been agreed between Celtic and the manufacturers. We're here to talk about Celtic's victory over Dundee last night and we're here to talk about the fact that both Celtic and Aberdeen have moved 9 points clear of Rangers in the league table by Halloween. Yes, the 31st of October Celtic are 9 points clear of their apparent title challengers. It's been a fascinating couple of months here in Scotland. Let's talk about all of it. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It would be much appreciated. We're trying to get towards 50,000 subs by the end of the year. We might not get there, but let's try and get as close as possible. It's all done through you. Go down below, hit both those buttons. It's absolutely free. And today, it's one of those days where there isn't an awful lot of news to cover. But hell, it's a big week coming up for Celtic. We have Aberdeen at the weekend, the side who just beat Rangers last night in the Scottish Premiership. We've got Leipzig on Tuesday. There's a lot at stake over the next couple of games for Celtic and between that a few minor things to go over but yeah just gotta have a general chit chat have a bit of a sit down and generally have a good laugh at what's happening in the Scottish Premiership so here is the league table after last night's fixtures of course it was a full card in the Scottish Premiership all six games were played in the one night and it's seen Celtic of course get three points against Dundee and Aberdeen beat Rangers which means we are still at the top of the table, joint on points with Aberdeen. Rangers nine points behind, heading into November, which has left a lot of questions hanging over Ibrox, a lot of questions hanging over the future of Philippe Clement. Will he go? Can he go? Can Rangers afford to let him go? Um, it's a big question mark over that side of the city right now. And over here, well, I guess, I guess we're just loving it, aren't we? I feel I've always done a good job looking at things honestly and realistically on this channel, whether it affects Celtic or Rangers um, or any other team in this league. I, I try my best to give an unbiased opinion on things and uh, an, an explanation to what might be happening without those personal things coming into it. The fact that I support Celtic, the fact that I hate Rangers, you know, I try my best to leave all of that out when I'm giving an assessment of something that's going on. But right now, Rangers are miles away. Right now, Rangers feel... And I'm going to say this, they feel eight years behind Celtic. Why do I say eight years? Why so specific? Because right now I don't see any differences of where Rangers Football Club are from today on the 31st of October 2024 and where they were on the 31st of October 2016. I feel they're eight years behind and even the progress that they made to catch up on Celtic and win a league title a few years ago is all gone. Um, I feel their squad is, is just as bad as what it was at its, maybe some of its worst times when they returned to the league. Their manager is the worst that I've personally seen from uh, a Celtic fan point of view, from the outside. They're nowhere near it. Aberdeen are now what I would call our title challengers this season. And last night is the prime example of why they are. They beat Rangers. They have beat the team who is supposedly Celtic's biggest threat. Aberdeen, the same side who came to Celtic Park, got a draw out of us from 2-0 down and showed a genuine challenge, whereas Rangers came to Celtic Park and looked like a bunch of amateurs running about the place. It's a mess over there right now, and I don't know when it'll get fixed, but they feel almost a decade behind Celtic once again. And right now, we're, we're loving it. Of course we are, because we're Celtic fans, and at the end of the day, you might want to call it bitter, you might want to say whatever about me, but, you know, that's football, if it was the shoe that was on the other foot. I'm sure Rangers fans would be having a good laugh, like they did when Neil Lennon cost us 10 in a row. You know, it was a right good laugh for them, just as this is a right good laugh for us now. It's football at the end of the day, of course we're going to have a laugh at it, but it's seriously, it's nuts. And I, and I wonder how long it'll actually go on. I feel a lot of it is self-inflicted, to be quite honest. I think the Rangers have shot themselves in the foot as a football club um, through a lot of their own doings behind the scene. You know, it's a club that doesn't have a CEO or chairman in place at the end of the day, but every year we hear these same blind calls from a, a large amount of Rangers supporters saying that that's them back, that they're coming for Celtic, that, you know, Brendan Rodgers will be quaking in his boots. And then every November, a manager gets sacked. The only thing is, this time round, can they afford to let another manager go in November? Because they'd done it last year with Michael Beale. They'd done it the year before with Giovanni Van Bronckhurst. The year before, Stephen Gerrard left them. They have been going through managers um, 
willy nilly, to be honest. And and God knows if they can afford to let go of a guy who's just signed a new contract. So the next few months are going to be really interesting to watch from the top of the table for both Celtic and Aberdeen. Um, it's as simple as that. And and listen, a lot of people might go on about having a good Rangers is healthier for Scottish football. It's healthier for the rivalry. It's healthier for so many different reasons. It doesn't affect me at the end of the day. I I love watching Celtic win title after title and beating Rangers at any given opportunity. Um, but they have to have a serious look at what's going on over there if they want to come anywhere close to Celtic. They are years behind. They are years behind us. And so many different aspects of how the club is run when it comes to management, when it comes to boardroom, when it comes to signings, recruitment. Rangers are being blown out of the water by Celtic everywhere. And if come on does go... Is this just going to be the same process again for a year? Is it going to come to January and Rangers fans are giving it, oh, we're on for a title charge, or wait till the summer and he gets his own players in, we'll be back next year, Celtic are in trouble. Is this the same, is this just going to be it every year from now on? It's nuts. I, for one, welcome our new title challengers. Aberdeen, welcome to the dance. Um, It'll be fun. Anyway, yeah, nine clear, good win for Celtic last night. So a good win for Celtic last night at home against Dundee, a 2-0 win in a game that wasn't a vintage performance by any means but it's one that ensures that we stay top of the table which ultimately is, is what matters most. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a frustrating game at times, I think a couple of players could have done better and we spoke a lot about that on the match reaction but hey, a couple of people we've got to talk about, Alistair Johnson who was absolutely brilliant last night when he came off the bench, shows how important he is, how vital he is to this system. I mean, Alistair Johnson right now, by the way, here's the top scorer, Charles. He's, he's third, or joint, joint second technically because the two players above him are joint first but third in it anyway and, and when it comes to scoring. He's got four goals. That's as many goals as Kyogo in the league this season. Which, by the way, is a conversation in itself. Is Kyogo scoring enough? He missed another couple of big chances last night. But Johnson has scored four goals in the league this season from right back. God, all they do is talk about how Tavenier scores from right back. Johnson, he's he's got more than Tavenier this season. Um, he's been unbelievable. Uh, from a defensive point of view, he's been really, really good. Attacking-wise, he's been really, really good. I think you've seen how much we missed his involvement on the right-hand side last night um, in that first half. And maybe that was down to the fact Kuhn wasn't there as well, so the right-hand side was just generally weaker. But as soon as he came on the park, he, he scored within minutes. Um, he's a top, top player. And, you know, fans are raving about his performance last night. And Alistair Johnson, well, he's, he's just loving life. So now Brendan Rodgers turns his attention to Saturday evening Aberdeen at Hamden in the League Cup semi-final. We're going to talk a lot about it tonight on the Celtic the Thunder, so make sure to tune into the podcast for a preview tomorrow. Um, but a huge game. Listen, it's the toughest tie we could have got. If we were playing Rangers on Saturday, I'd be thinking, well, we're in the final. <laughs> but Aberdeen, I don't know which way this will go. I really don't. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and say that it's going to be easy, because it's not. Just like I said against going into the league game, and people were like, oh, don't be daft, we'll blow them out of the water. Didn't blow them out of the water. Um, the last time we played them at Hamden, I don't know if you remember what happened there. It wasn't an easy game either. This is going to be tough on Saturday. Um, it really is. And, and I'm, looking, I'm actually relishing the idea of that challenge. Um, so, yeah, it'll be exciting come the time. Nervous, absolutely. I want Celtic to go and win a treble this year. I really want Brendan Rodgers to be back winning those. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll talk about it a lot tonight. Make sure to check out the podcast tomorrow. And one of the things to finish up on today is the fact that Celtic have apparently re-signed with Adidas with an announcement to come very, very soon. Footy Headlines broke this earlier on today that they can exclusively leak that Adidas and Celtic have already signed their contract extension and that we expect an official announcement soon. The deal, of course, was due to expire at the end of this year and there's been a lot of talk about that deal being uh, re-signed. We've covered that a couple of times now on the channel, but apparently now it will happen and will be announced imminently. Um, Footy Headlines also said that Celtic and Adidas uh, are, are extending their deal because of the uh, good sales and brand recognition success. There's no information yet on how many seasons the deal is extended for, but we expect a duration of around five years. So we've already been with Adidas now, of course, since 2020. Um, so that's another five years on top of the, the five that we've already seen. Um, 
yeah, good news for the club from a financial point of view, from your own aesthetic point of view, if you've liked the Adidas kits or not, might be good news, might be bad news, but apparently that deal is signed, it'll be another multi-million banger, we're set to become one of the elite clubs as well, so Celtic just heading in a very, very good direction everywhere right now, on the park, off the park, as I said, it's night and day to every other club in this country at the minute, and, um, you know, good, I love it, Monoselic. That's it for today. If you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. All that nonsense. I'm away to go and do the podcast now. Uh, cheerio.